finally, while we're still looking at this um, probe area, I should mention that there is another toolbox here similar to the toolbox that's found in the second panel. If you right click in the third panel area, the toolbox comes up. The top tool, the default, is the one that we've been using where you reorder the sites and color the sites by um, clicking or uh, dragging using this tool. You can also um, left click to choose the second tool, which was setting an active site. And that would work over here the same way that clicking on the spike trace worked over here. So if I click on this site, you see that it highlights the trace over here um, to show which spike trace corresponds with the location that we choose on this, on this map. We can right click again and we see that the third option that comes up is enable or disable site. What that option would be used for is if you are using a probe that you know has a bad site on it or maybe it didn't have a bad site when it went in but maybe there's just a lot of noise on that particular channel and it's just kind of distracting you from, um, from the, the, the channels that are of interest to you. What you can do once you've chosen that uh, disable link is if you come to a site on here and let's see, right now we've got this site, channel 23 highlighted. If we now click to disable it, we see that once we disable the, the channel on, on this display, Channel 23 also disappeared from the main spike uh, area. Suppose we didn't like this channel. We click and again, that channel goes away. So with our enable and disable um, tool from this toolbox, we can, that, that's one way that we can remove um, potential noise or, or, or bad channels from our um, recording display. But there's another option as well. The second way that you can enable or disable channels is to come over here into this channel properties area. There are other things that you can do in this area as well though. So for the sake of demonstration, we're going to stop streaming so that we can make changes in the channel properties. Um, Yes, so uh, for the sake of this experiment, we're gonna go ahead and stop streaming so that we can look at what changes we can make in our channel properties area. First, when we get to the area, we um, see the same type of status feedback that, that we saw in the upper left-hand portion of the screen where we've got a probe in port A and it's a four by eight probe and we have no smart link, uh, smart link head stages on any of the other three ports. Next, when you come down here, this area with that begins with AMP A1 and then goes into the channel numbers, these correspond with the traces um, shown uh, in panel two and also with the channels on our uh, probe model over here. So remember, we clicked and disabled a couple of channels, channel 23 and channel two. You see that they're both show up as enabled or disabled here. You can also change them back from here. If you double click on the disabled, there's a drop down box. You can come back to enable it. Um, that X disappeared from here. And when we return to the spike trace area, you would see that the, the spike trace is returned as well. We could also do the same for channel 23. Another option um, that you have here is you see this custom name. On the, the main, if we return to this string, we see um, each trace has a channel name next to it. That name corresponds with the fixed name over here. However, when you're recording, um, if you decide that you would like to make a note about a particular channel, like for instance, that um, channel nine might happen to have a really good spike on it, you can make that note here by changing the channel name to um, say 
spike a right shank. All right. When we return out to the, the stream, it's, it hasn't changed on here. It's still called uh, channel nine on the display. However, when you record the data, um, instead of channel nine, it'll have your custom uh, channel name uh, displayed in your data so that you'll know, hey, this was a channel of interest to me.